Hey everybody, back in the shop this morning getting into Gary's engine. Um, now this engine Gary bought new, well not new, remanufactured from a company. And he sent me a long list of stuff that was wrong with it. Um, from what I understand right now, he can't get more than 70 PSI compression out of any of the cylinders. Uh, there's no power. Um, and I imagine there's a lot of stuff wrong with this one. There was metal in the pan from brand new. Uh, I don't know what that's all about. Um, and I'm not looking to um, bash anybody or badmouth anybody at all. Um, but the thing I don't like is that uh, Gary went back to the place he bought this, uh, called up the guy, and uh, and they wouldn't do anything for him. Um, this is the seventh motor from this particular company. Um, not that I've worked on, but it's the seventh one that people have contacted me about. Uh, it is now, this will be the third engine that I'm going to rebuild from this particular company. So, what this is, is, looks like it was an M38 engine, kind of like a hybrid 12 volt alternator on it. Um, um, the engine looks now like it would be going out instead of coming in. So, he picked up this engine, uh, they did not put a thermostat in there, they put the neck down, you would think there'd be a thermostat in there. Um, that happens on a lot of engines that I see that come through here. Guys rebuild them, they don't put a thermostat in. Uh, they have just a, just a mashup of different head studs in there. Uh, you guys know I like to use the ARP stuff, uh, and we're probably going to do that here. I don't know what we're going to find in here, um, but we're going to take it apart. And again, I don't know what we're going to find for machine work. I'm not trying to beat anybody up here. But I do believe if you're going to rebuild engines and customers have problems with them right out of the box, you should back up your work, which is not the case. And I don't really like that. It, it just it, it gives people that rebuild this old stuff a bad name. So uh, I'm going to get into this one, get it on a stand right now, um, get the head off. Everything is going to have to be carefully measured. Everything's going to have to be inspected. We're going to magnet flux it. We're going to go through this like it was a uh, just a junk engine that came in. Uh, if need be, um, I'm going to get it apart. And if need be, I can get the crank sent out pretty quick. Uh, but we're going to tear into this, and I'll show you what happens along the way. Okay, guys, engines on the stand. We're going to start to tear down. A um, <clears throat> couple things. Before we start, uh, it's not a big deal, but uh, it's kind of like a pet peeve of mine, and it gives you a glimpse into the knowledge of your engine builder. Uh, every Willie's L head had number one right here, um, and then counterclockwise, one, three, four, two. Um, <clears throat> I see this a lot on guys, you know, like when guys take their engines to a a performance or a race shop or something they just throw that oil pump in there and it doesn't really matter where you put one you could put one here in any of the four positions every Jeep from the factory one three four two um, I don't know who put this distributor in I'm not hassling anybody or anything again I don't want to really think I'm bashing people but um, we got one here three you can see that's number four and then two. It just gives you a little bit of, like I say, a little insight into your engine builder. And uh, I know who sold this engine, I just don't know who built this engine. Uh, I don't think the guy that sold it builds them. Um, but we're going to get deeper into that. Uh, depending on what we find in there, we'll, we'll get deeper into that. So uh, if need be, like I said, this is the seventh engine that's had problems from this guy. Um, if we find some real ugly stuff, um, I'm probably going to have to tell you who it is so you can be careful and you don't lose your money. So, 
tear down's coming. Okay guys, here we are with the head off. Um, this is a best gasket, copper gasket. Uh, I do not use these, I don't like these. Your engine builder should deck the block and plane the head if you want to use one of these. These really need perfectly flat surfaces. And we don't have flat surfaces on this cylinder uh, on the block. Cylinder head's not bad. Block um, is going to need to be decked. Uh, okay, second thing I don't like. Uh, we could just we could just change that best gasket out. No big deal. Second thing, they use regular. This is just bad news here. Just regular threaded rod. Uh, this one, this one. Um, I don't know if they took these out. Um, the valves are supposedly been done. Now, uh, Gary told me the engine wasn't running good. He took it to a local machine shop and uh, they did a, the valve job. Uh, new valves, I guess. Uh, it looks like they put new springs, uh, retainers, keepers, stuff like that. We're going to give those a quick vacuum down, see how they did. Uh, we're going to measure the bores. The bores do not look like they're in great shape. Uh, there is zero cross hatch on these on these bores. Uh, we're going to measure them up. Uh, looks like they stuck some 60 over pistons in there. So we know we should be 3 um, 185 for dimension. We're going to check that out, see if we're losing compression right in there. Um, but uh, stuff like this, no, that's not good. Uh, you could see, like on this particular stud, I think you can see that when they went to take that out, they gouged that all up. Gouged this one up bad here. This one, uh, those cause stress risers, and that head stud can easily break. Uh, these are all coming out, and they're all going to get changed out with ARPs. It's the only way I feel good about sending an engine out because there's so much trouble with head studs these days. Uh, we're going to put good ARPs in there. Um, we're chipping away at it. Uh, the intake and exhaust, I mean, they just threw an oversized stud in there, and it looks like they took a hacksaw and cut that off. Uh, just little stuff like that drives me crazy. Um, you know, you're putting an engine together, and it, this should last for another 50, 70, 80 years, you know? And uh, I just don't like how it goes. The hardware they used on the intake and exhaust manifold was completely wrong. Uh, I had to actually pry it off because the washers got jammed in there. We'll put the right stuff on there. And uh, we'll just keep digging in there. I will let you know what I come up with for dimensions on these cylinders and what the valves look like. Uh, hopefully they went through and they did a good three angle valve job. Um, but we're going to check that out. And uh, I'll let you know what we come up with. Okay guys, we're continuing on with the tear down and measuring up the cylinders. Uh, I got my snap gauge here. And I got my Starrett 3 to 4 inch mic. I'm just going to set that in there. Uh, somewhere around the top. Keep it nice and straight so it's so it reads right. Hard to do this with the camera going. There we go. So we've got three 75, 85, 95. Three two oh two. Okay. I don't know if you can see that. Three inch we want three inch one eighty five. Three inch two o two. So we're way, way out of whack. Um, yeah, I got the number three out. Uh, just, I just took a random piston out. 
Uh, there's 60 over pistons in here. I could tell that these cylinders have not been bored and honed. I'm going to try and get you in there with a light. I'm going to hang in there. I know it's kind of a pain in here, but let me get the camera off the stand. Um, you see how there's there's absolutely no cross hatch in there? I can't get the light in there the way I want it. Um, there's absolutely zero cross hatch in there. There's a lot of straight up and down lines in all the cylinders. These cylinders have not been bored and honed. There's no question about it in my mind. This was a 60 over engine. Um, because when you go way down there with the snap gauge, you get a 60 over reading. 3 inch 185. And then you get 3 inch 202 up top. Um, and it's like that on just about all the cylinders. Uh, that That's just crazy. You're never ever going to make power you're gonna you're gonna lose compression like he's doing I mean that's what he told me he's losing compression and uh, the bore is just all of them are, are horrible uh, uh, you've seen my blocks if you follow along you've seen them come out of a honing machine with the cross hatch on them and that cross hatch stays on there for many 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 thousands of miles uh, we have zero crosshatch here. I know this was not um, properly rebuilt. Um, again, they just took 60 over and they threw them in there. Uh, there's the, the basically the cylinders exaggerated look like an ice cream cone. Standard bore down the very very bottom where there's nowhere and and a huge up top. Um, the way the piston goes to where the wear is, uh, three inch 202. Uh, and this way is worn a little bit as well. That should be 3 inch 185 again. And uh, it's 3 inch 192 going that way. Um, they are not round. There's no possible way that that's going to work. Um, I got a ring from number 3 I wanted to show you. Hang on, let me grab that. Um, just, I don't know if you're going to be able to see this. Hang in there. This ring is completely embedded uh, right there. Can you? I hope you can see that. That is all metal embedded in the ring. I try and get you zeroed in there. Uh, all the rings are like this. There's so much wear inside that engine already uh, it's crazy I mean it's just phenomenal um, now I'm gonna take the number three rod and show you what that looks like uh, let me go grab that I want to show you what the bearings look like um, what I found out is and I only took number three apart the crank was not turned either so uh, there's 30 under bearings uh, in the connecting rod in there. I didn't check the mains yet, but I'm sure they're gonna be a disaster, too I'm just kind of going along trying to see how much work this engine is actually going to take And it's going to need a rebore and hone. I mean everything's got to come apart. It's just a disaster But let me show you after with just Hardly any runtime what the bearing shells look like. Let me go grab those and I'll be right back with you I'll try and get you on the cap right here think you can see the scoring in here. I could catch all this with my nail. That's a hard line right through there and a lot of scoring here. It shouldn't be like that with decent oil pressure and stuff but uh, it's a disaster. Uh, you can see how we've already worn through the material here. See how shiny it is right here and these deep scores in there. Okay, that is, that's terrible. Um, that won't last uh, at all. So I'm going to flip the engine. I'm going to show you what the crank looks like, and then we'll take a look at some mains as well. 
Okay guys, I got the crank where it's just about ready to come out and I'm doing some measuring and some inspecting on it. Uh, the crank is worn pretty bad. Uh, a lot of times when the cranks, let me zero in on that rod, a lot of times this area will wear. Okay. Now this is the biggest rod that we have. This is just a cap. I measured them all this is the biggest one we have. All the rods are worn badly as well in this dimension okay and what you get is you're supposed to have a maximum of ten thousands get ten thousands feeler gauge in there and that's maximum we're shucking back and forth over fifty thousands here that one's even worse and this is the biggest cap I have um, the crank is worn in that direction well, let's check one and four now the crank is worn in that area there so that's probably that's probably over 50 right there um, <clears throat> so uh, th th that's not that's not something that we would save oh, look at that one go okay you're just gonna be squirting out oil pressure here like crazy um, now the, the rod surfaces, uh, the rods have already, the, the previous, whoever ground it last, uh, the rods are 30, okay? Uh, I don't know if they'd clean up in 40, there's some deep scores in them. Uh, I don't go much past 40 because bearings are hard to get. The mains are already 40 and taking some measurements where they're really galled up. We're not going to clean that up even in 50. So, um, it's sad to say, but this crank is junk. Let me get you in there again. Maybe with the light on it, you can see that better. That's got to be, God, that's got to be 15, 20 thousandths deep. We've got more down here. We've got a big nasty one in the front. Um, the crank just is not going to clean up for us. Uh, very, very infrequently do I have to um, not use the crank that came with the engine. Um, only one other engine this happened on recently. I was a while back, that F head I did for, for Eric in New York. Um, he had the same problem, um, but his rods were worn. His crank, well, his crank was worn and his rods were worn, but I couldn't save any of his stuff either. Um, now, a lot of guys, they wouldn't check this, and you'd always be on the low end of your oil pressure. You'd be wondering, you couldn't find where you're losing your oil pressure. When that gap is too big, uh, you're going to lose oil pressure real bad. Uh, there's no question about it. it just, it's just how it is. Um, I don't know if you can see in there, but let me try and get you in there, hang in there. You see how this is, this area right here is all blue. Um, it looks like that's been heated up. And if you feel, there's a sharp burr here. I mean, you can, you can get part of your nail to come off on that. You, you see how sharp that is? That's this metal being worn and pushing back and raising a ridge here. It's like that on all of them. It's very sharp. You run your finger on there, you can cut your finger. Um, this was... Uh, none of these components were, were checked before this motor was assembled. Um, that's why it's so bad. Um, but like I say, it's, it's not very often that we have to basically scrap a crank. But this one is is not going to be good for the type of engine that we're trying to put together here. We don't want any problems with this engine. We want it to last another 75 years, and it's just what we have to do. And you can see how bad scored these bearing shells are. And there's no miles on this thing. I mean, this is just there's just no miles on it. Uh, this crank was just going to eat this engine right up. So, 
uh, I'm gonna have to pull another shelf uh, another crank off the shelf and uh, see what we need for mains and rods um, you can see somebody somebody actually stamped this one and I can't get you in there but it's stamped oh yeah there it is 030 040 um, and I don't know when the last time it was was ground but uh, it was not for this particular rebuild so uh, the crank has to go I am gonna see if his rods are gonna be suitable otherwise two of them are are severely worn uh, I'll see what the new crank what the dimensions are in here and here and I'll make sure we have our um, no more than ten thousandths there and if we have to change some rods we might have to change some rods as well um, but I've got a pile of rods that I can um, resize for them and uh, and I'll see what I got for cranks so um, more sad news on this engine but um, with a little bit more time we'll uh, we'll be we'll be turning around and uh, doing some machine work on it and getting it right but um, sometimes it's uh, Nothing but, but heartache when you open them up. But we'll get it right. Hang in there, Gary. Um, I'll, I'll get it uh, perfect for you. The pistons are no good. Uh, we're a 3 inch 202 on number 3. And my finished bore for an 80 over piston is 3 inch 205. So we are really cutting it close on piston size. And I'm hoping that I can get 80s fit in there uh, hoping that the bores clean up um, I won't know until I set up the boring barn and start doing that stuff but um, I think that gives you an idea of how bad this engine was why it was not making any power uh, and it wasn't long, it wouldn't have lasted long there was so much metal in the engine uh, it would have self-destructed in no time. Um, sorry for the bad news, Gary, but um, I do feel good that I've identified all the trouble, and uh, I just got to go after fixing it. There's a hard piece of metal. Look at that. Just pick that off the block. I don't even know where that piece of metal came from. Looks like part of a ring. Um, so, uh, not the best news, Gary, but uh, I'll get after it and make it right for you. Um, it's a shame that stuff like this is happening. You're not the only guy, and, and I do hope that um, not a lot of other people are going to have to go through this. And, and like I say, I'm not going to say um, who the engine builder was. Um, Gary, if you'd like to put that out there in a comment on YouTube... Uh, that's fine with me. Uh, it won't upset me at all. Uh, I don't know if you got any of your money back from him. I don't know what's happening, but um, if you'd like to call him out, you might help some other um, a Jeep enthusiasts not get taken like that. Um, I hear awful things, and uh, and a lot of people are paying the price. So um, this is this is what you get. Uh, I'm going to continue taking it apart and um, I'll be back with you pretty standard from here on in cranks gonna go out um, I, I will set it up I'll, I'll deck it I will have to tickle the valves a little bit because I'm gonna take some material off because the head the, the, the block is not flat um, I'll resize the rods I'll set up the boring bar and try and clean everything up at 80 over um, so we don't have to sleeve it and uh, I'll just continue on with this and I'll show you videos on it from time to time. So, um, thanks again for watching everybody. We'll catch you on the next video.